lifeboat. Chewie pilots the boat to the submerged shed, where 26-year-old me coaxes the frightened dog on board. So how do we do this, I ask. How do we change my past? Nicholas watches as my younger self cradles the shivering animal. A weak voice rises from below us, faintly coming from the house we're sitting on. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? The men in the boat are too far away to hear her cries for help, but Nicholas marks the voice, searching for its source with his eyes. Please, I'm trapped. I keep trying, but I can't break through. How do we get the last key? I ask, exhaustion laying me flat. Nicholas gets to his feet and rushes to the edge of the roof where he watches the boat. The men on board ruffle the dog behind the ears and throttle up the engine. They're poised to navigate to the place where twisted bed sheets have been laid out on another roof to spell S.O.S. This will take them further away from us, and the helpless survivor will be destined to meet her fate. Why save me? I ask. Why not save this woman? It wouldn't be difficult. You just have to get the attention of the men in that boat. They've come all this way, and all they've managed to rescue is that dog. The voice inside the house stammers and breaks. No, oh, no, don't, don't go, don't go. She desperately bangs on the wall with a blunt object. Oh, please, sweet Jesus, see me. As the boat pulls away. Nicholas turns to me, as broken by all of this as I am. I prop myself up on my elbows. My body is weak and heavy. I'm ready for this to be over. Nicholas lowers his head and stares at me from below his crumpled brow. And which one of your regrets do you wish to change? Fallujah, I answer. I have to try to save my brother. And what will you do there, Paul? Drive faster. Let nothing stop you. Do you do what Captain Squall says? I flinch, but he doesn't stop. Do you murder that child? Do you do whatever it takes? No, I say, my voice cracking. Send me back further. Maybe if I didn't go. Chris won't go. Nicholas cocks his head at me and frowns. He'd stay for the band. You'd go back and persevere until you have a hit. Strike a gold record. Never mind creative differences. You'd figure out a way, right? You'd lead, they'd follow, and everyone would live happily ever after. Grimacing, I sit up. If I stayed, I don't think he'd go. Why is that? Chris didn't follow his big brother off to war. He was too competitive for that. If I joined the marching band, he'd go out for the football team. If I got an after-school job, he got two. And if I enlisted in the Navy, he signed up for the Marines. Nicholas scoffs. Ridiculous! He never fully committed to the band because for some reason he saw it as my band. That's why he never took it seriously. That's why he blew it off. That's not what happened! It's my turn to scoff at Nicholas. What do you know about it besides what I showed you? Don't forget the people you saved in Iraq. You can't just shrug your shoulders and assume someone else would have come along to make the sacrifice. Let me do it all again, I say. Start off the day I was born. I can do it. I can change it. All of it. I know I can. With everything I know now, I can have it all. You have it all! What does that even mean? You want the whole fairy tale? You save your brother and everyone else. Live your rock star dreams and get the girl. I'm tired, Nicholas. I make a feeble attempt to stand. Nicholas turns to the boat, which sputters to an unplanned stop. He roars at me like a cornered animal. Why isn't this your moment, Paul? Surprised by Nicholas's ferocity, a shudder runs chilly through my wet body. I want to go home. Please, just let me hit reset. I can fix everything. 
I know I can. I can do it. Nicholas returns to the edge of the roof and turns his head to listen to the woman's insistent pleas. She hammers at the wood and a hole appears between Nicholas's feet. It's just large enough to fit two fingers through, just large enough to encourage her to keep swinging. I'm beaten, cold and tired. My breath comes out in sighs and shudders. Everything left to say remains unspoken. Twenty-six-year-old me yells for Chewy to get the stalled boat running. With each swing of her tool, the woman gets one step closer to breaking through and escaping her prison. Her arm fits through the breach. She waves a damp towel and cries out, Please see me. We're dying in here. She's not the only one down there, says Nicholas. That shakes something loose from my memory. I may be dying, I recall but I'm not the only one in the water. Twenty-six-year-old me asks, Where's the fuel can? You think we're out of gas? Chewie asks. You're the boat guy, you tell me. Me? I'm the boat guy? Yeah. You're the one that's in the Navy. The woman takes another swing and another. Soon she's made room for her head to poke into the light. Help me! The men in the boat search the horizon. Hello? I'm here, she waves her towel. My younger self points in our direction. Over there, Chew. The woman weeps with joyous relief. Praise the Lord. They see us, baby. Hold on. They're coming. Nicholas smiles at me, all anger and anxiety fleeing his face. Why didn't you tell me you saved them? He reaches for me, and I take his hand, letting him help me to my feet for the first time. The boat arrives, and my younger self steps onto the roof and uses an axe to widen the opening. The woman from the attic leaps into his arms. My daughter's down there. She's diabetic, and she's not feeling too good. Do you have insulin? he asks. It's in the bathroom. Underwater. We haven't been able to get to it since the storm. The two men help the women into the boat, and then 26 year old me climbs back out onto the roof. Where's the bathroom? Second door on the right, the woman says warily. She watches with trembling surprise as the man steps into the water and sinks below the surface. The moment gives me goosebumps. Standing here, waiting the way the others had when it was me in the water, it feels like he's down there for far too long. But I remember how it was in the cold water that day. I still recall how it felt to hold my breath until my lungs felt like they would pop, until I was fighting the urge to suck in death with every fiber of my being. I can hold my breath for a long time, a result of childhood contests in the pool. This pushes me to my limits, and I recall wondering if I'd finally beaten my brother's record. Groping in the darkness with my eyes closed in a house I'd never previously visited, I was searching for a needle in a haystack. The chance of my finding what I was looking for were almost non-existent, and yet, somehow, I did the impossible. Twenty-six-year-old me burst to the surface, sputtering for air. He pulls himself into the boat, beaming at the praise he receives from the mother and accepting pats on the back from his brother in arms. The inhabitants of the boat freeze as my younger self turns to me. Searching the lines in my face, he smiles and asks, I've got a heavy load to haul, don't I? I nod, but you won't be alone. You'll have an amazing wife and an incredible kid, and a mother and a sister that love you more than you deserve. My younger self looks at the object in his hand. Any advice? Searching in vain for an answer, all I'm left with is a ragged shrug. He begins to turn away, but changes his mind. He looks back at me, squinting as though what he's about to say is of no consequence at all. I'm trying to forgive myself. 
my heart begins to pound. He continues, do I ever, I mean, can I? I I don't know, I say, as the dam breaks and hot tears stream down my cheeks. But don't let that stop you from trying. Right. He gives a half smile and tosses me the final key. Well, I better get on with it then.